This is Mr. Purcell and today we're going to be looking at some applications of quadratic functions. We already said that a quadratic function is in the form f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c and its graph is a parabola either opening up or down. It opens up when A is positive and down when A is negative. Minus B over 2A gives us an equation for the X coordinate of the vertex. It also tells us the uh, equation for the axis. The domain of a quadratic function is always all real numbers. There's no negative, excuse me, no fractions, no square roots in the equation. So you could plug any number you want in for x. What, uh, what we're going to be using, doing now are looking at some board problems and to sort of get it going, like problem number 10, it's not a word problem, but it's just setting the stage. It says, okay, here's a graph of a quadratic function and use it to find the minimum value of f of x. Well, minimum means smallest, and f of x, that's the same thing as y. So it says, look at the graph and find the smallest y value. Well, that's going to be about the easiest problem we'll do this semester. What's the smallest y value in this graph? It is positive 5. Sometimes students will say negative five. No, that's an x value, not a y value. They're wanting the smallest y value. Now we're going to do some word problems. Let's see, look at this one. A woman has a taco stand. And she's found that her daily costs are approximated by c of x equals x squared minus 20x plus 650. Find the number of units of taco she should sell to minimize her cost. Well, this is a quadratic function. How is it opening? Is it opening up or down? Well, it's opening up and so it talks about minimizing her cost her minimum would be at the vertex so do the little vertex formula minus b over 2a it'd be a minus b is negative 20 so negative negative 20 over 2 times a a is 1, 2 times 1 is 2, so 10. She should sell 10 units of tacos. Now, you realize we don't know what a unit is. It might be an order of three. It might be an order of a dozen. Who knows how big a production her taco stand is. But she should sell 10 units of tacos to minimize her costs. And then we're asked, find that minimum cost? Well, what do you think we're going to do with that 10 in order to find the cost? Yeah, that's right. Plug it in. So plug the 10 in for x and let's see what we would have. I'll do that right here. C of 10. 10 squared is 100. Minus 20 times 10, that's 200. Plus 650. So 100 minus 200 is a negative 100 plus 650. Is that going to be a 550? So you type in 550 right there. For all of these word problems, basically you're going to find the vertex. It's either going to be a parabola opening up or a parabola opening down. Let's see. Number 12. The number of mosquitoes in millions in a certain area 
depends on the June rainfall X in inches. So X is the number of inches of rainfall that occur in June. The function that models this phenomenon is M of X equals 8X minus X squared. Find the amount of rainfall that maximizes the number of mosquitoes. What is the maximum number of mosquitoes? Well, first of all, we need, this function should be written AX squared plus BX plus C. So I'm going to write it like this. M of X equals, put the, the negative X squared first. So how is this quadratic, how is this parabola opening, up or down? Well, it's opening down, which means the vertex is what? A minimum or a maximum? A maximum. And so that's what we need. So do the minus B over 2A. So minus 8 over 2 times negative 1, 2 times uh, negative 1 is negative 2, so that's a 4. So 4 inches of rain is going to maximize the mosquitoes. How do we find that maximum number? Well, plug it in. Plug a 4 in. And it doesn't matter which one you use. I guess I'll just use the 8x minus x squared. If you want to plug into the negative 1x squared plus 8x, that's fine. So plug in a 4 in. Let me see if I can. If I go 8. Ooh, 8 times 4 minus 4 squared. Well, heck, in the time I'm doing this, Y'all can do 8 times 4, 32. 4 squared is 16. 32 minus 16 is 16. So there will be 16 million mosquitoes in that area if they have 4 inches of rain during June. Let's see, where's another one of these? This one's a little tricky. Number 13. Between 1989 and 1998, the population of small town USA can be modeled by. Well, you'll definitely want a calculator, I would think, for doing this. For x equals 0 represents 1989. So then Basically, X is the number of years since 89. If X is 1, that would be 1990. If X is 2, 1991, and so forth. Based on this model, in what year did the population reach its minimum? Well, this thing is opening how? Up or down? Well, that first number there, A is positive, so it's opening up. So, yeah, the minimum is occurring at the vertex. So we're going to do the little vertex formula. X equals minus, ooh, minus a negative, so that would be a positive 16.02 all over 2 times 0.89. So we have a 16.02 over, where's my calculator? What's 2 times 0.89? 2 times 0.89, 1.78. So we're punching in 16.02 divided by 1.78. 16. 0 0.02 divided by 1.78. That's a 9. So, when X is 9, that's when the population of this little town reached its smallest, reached its minimum. Now, what number am I going to put here? I'm not going to say the population reached its minimum in the year 9. No. Look back at how we define these X's. 
X is basically the number of years since 1989. So if X is 0, that's 89. If X is 1, 1990. If X is 2, 1991. What am I saying I'm going to have to do to this 9 in order to get this year? Add the 1998. So when did this city reach its smallest or minimum? In the year 1998. So you find your minus B over 2A. And then once you're through with that, add 1989 to it to actually get the year. This little trick here of letting x be 0, 1, and 2 is just a way to keep the numbers smaller. Okay? So, lights have gone out again. Maybe that's a sign for me to wrap it up. But uh, work on this graphing quadratic functions and these applications, and I will see you all the next time. Okay? Bye-bye.